In case you missed it this week, the House passed legislation criminalizing common firearm cleaning practices and even possession of commonly owned firearm parts, and now GOA is getting zucked by the meta fact checkers. Hey guys, I'm Phil, and this is the Minuteman Moment. This is the second time GOA has been censored by the anti-gun fact checkers over at Meta, formerly known as Facebook and someday known as our overlords, in just the last six months. First, they claim the ATF didn't have an illegal gun registry, which we proved to be false. They do have a registry, and you can check out that mini-series for more information. Now the fact checkers say the House passed HR 7910 doesn't criminalize cleaning your gun even though the bill defines commonly unserialized gun parts as ghost guns and bans you from assembling those parts into a functioning firearm, like after you disassemble and clean a gun. So let's break all of that down for the fact-checking bird bots over at Meta. Title three of HR 7910, the Protecting Our Kids Act, bans cleaning guns like an AR-15 for the first 30 months of enactment. What's worse, after 30 months, those same common gun parts that aren't registered with a serial number are banned. First, I want to talk about the first 30 months. First, the bill would regulate gun parts like an upper receiver on an AR-15 as a ghost gun. How? Well, a ghost gun is defined as an unserialized frame or receiver. And a frame or receiver is a part that houses one or more vaguely defined fire control components or undefined essential components. That encapsulates a ton of different parts on every gun, from your hunting shotgun to your semi-auto handgun. The bill does this by adopting its definition of a frame or receiver from the proposed Biden ghost gun ban, which allowed for the regulation of gun parts instead of a single gun. My Glock 40, as some of you will remember, had as many as 16 regulated parts under the Biden ATF rule. And this is also applicable under HR 7910. So Gun Owners of America and 60,000 of our grassroots activists criticized this proposed definition for regulating as many as 10 parts on an AR-15 with a background check. ATF recognized GOA's concerns that the AR-15 may now include as many as 10 frames or receivers and they revised their definition before issuing their final definition. This allowed them to avoid the regulation of gun parts, and ATF decided instead to focus only on one housing or structural component for a given type of weapon. HR 7910 then prohibits anyone from manufacturing a ghost gun. But get this, manufacturing firearms includes anyone disassembling, cleaning, and then reassembling common gun parts back into a functional firearm. So there you have it. Your unserialized gun parts are now ghost guns. And if you disassemble them, clean them, and try to put them back together, you've run afoul of the ban on manufacturing a ghost gun. Take that, Meta. But what about that ban you mentioned? Well, the bill's goal was never to help you maintain your firearms in good condition. HR 7910 was always about mandating, serializing, and registering of common gun parts under the threat of gun confiscation. It's always been about that. If you don't serialize your gun parts within 30 months, they become illegal ghost guns for the federal government to confiscate. The ban would apply to all unserialized gun parts that meet the definition of frame or receiver, but are not grandfathered by the benevolent Attorney General Merrick Garland before January 2023. And we all know he's not gonna be sympathetic and let everyone keep their AR-15s and other semi-automatic handguns, rifles, and shotguns. So how is this gonna affect gun owners? Some estimate that there are as many as 20 million AR-15s in civilian circulation, according to our analysis provided to and verified by the ATF. AR-15s could have as many as 10 frames or receivers, if not grandfathered, nine of which are commonly unserialized. If this is true, then the passage of this bill would demand 180 million AR-15 parts be serialized and registered with the federal government. Otherwise, you might incur up to 45 years in prison and up to five years per gun part. And if serializing each firearm were done by FFLs at the market rate of $50 a frame or receiver, an individual could keep their AR-15 for the cost of $450. That's on top of what you already paid for. And at that rate, it would cost the American people $9 billion, with a B, 
to serialize and keep their AR-15s, free from this supposed ghost gun ban. The costs of applying such a regulatory ban on the hundreds of millions of other firearms in circulation in the United States is unimaginable and would likely cost gun owners hundreds of billions of dollars. And this might be the most important part of all. Not all of the parts that qualify as a frame or receiver under this rule are even able to be serialized in accordance with the ATF standards, like magazine catches, slide locks, buffer springs, extractors, extractor depressor plungers, and more on Glock and AR-15 type firearms. This means that under HR 7910, some essential firearm parts would receive a blanket ban, eliminating America's ability to maintain functioning models of these firearms legally. So there you have it. Zuckerberg and the tech overlords are trying to hide from you that HR 7910 criminalizes cleaning your gun even though it outright does. But what's worse is that it's an unconstitutional registration on gun parts with a ban on commonly owned firearms like AR-15s and semi-auto handguns. They want to censor this truth. They want to censor this video. And that's why we're proud to be here in Washington, D.C., holding Congress accountable and spreading the truth in times of disinformation and censorship. That's it for this week. Please like and subscribe to this video and share it. That's the most important part. Don't let them hide this from everybody. I'm Phil and we'll see you next time.